two straight signs of the Southlands Extra. Who'd have thunk? Uh, before we get started, I uh, just want to mention Section 103. They are one of the exclusive Georgia Tech design apparel uh, places where you can get GT merch. Uh, if you happen to want to get more, uh, they got a lot, a lot of fun designs, uh, including a Point Tech one for all of your volleyball needs. We're coming to, or volleyball is coming to McCamish on October 9th. So if you want to get dressed for that, they are the place to go. Uh, free shipping for over 70 bucks. You can go visit them at section103.com or on Twitter at the same handle, section103 in digits. Uh, to transition very briskly away from that, it is the day we have been very much expecting on the flats. Um, I was driving or scootering by the Edge Building. It's all President Cabrera leave a meeting, which I believe was where the official hammer dropped uh, for Coach Jeff Collins and Athletic Director Todd Stansbury's departures. Uh, with me is not Jake or Akshay. They're at work. I am technically supposed to be at work, but I'm not at work. Instead, I am in the Technique's new brand spanking office in the Student Center with the sports editor, Will Fuss. Uh, thanks for doing this on short notice. Howdy. Happy to be here. So, I, yeah, I should be. <laughs> we've been waiting a while. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I thought it was a long time coming. Um, I, I don't know. I, I had hope coming into this year a little bit, but then with the way the season opened, um, I feel like it was it was the right move. I'm sure plenty of people are wondering about the timing, but uh, it had to happen at some point fairly soon. Yeah, I mean, Ole Miss was enough to... To, to feel like, okay, this is not the territory we wanted to be in in any scenario ever. Ole Miss was a bad game. It wasn't even one where we beat ourselves necessarily. I mean, they just, you know, they had two and a half times the number of yards as us. They outgained us on the ground like 300 to 50, which is yeah. a little bit egregious. So, yeah, that game was bad, and UCF might have been worse. Yeah, yeah well, we probably, we, we, there's a lot of ways we could have won the UCF game. I mean, between, we got a, fr a free interception that I think we turned, one of those, we, I think we just turned that into points. On our on our one touchdown of the day, and then a couple missed field goals, another punt blocked, four and three and a half games at that point. Right. Uh, well, UCF is just another example of us beating ourselves. I mean, that was that was one of our bigger problems, really, under Collins' whole tenure, but especially this year. Uh, I mean, against Clemson, we hung with them for a while, and a lot of the reason that they had any success they did early in the game was because of mistakes like our blocked punts and badly timed penalties and stuff. And the UCF game was just a perfect example of that. We outgained them. Um, we really looked like a, a very strong team on both sides of the ball. Uh, the problem was the special teams and, uh, you know, every other little mistake uh, added up to a pretty bad loss. It added up to, well, two people don't have their jobs anymore Correct. after, Correct. as of now. They're, um, they're, they're heading to glass doors. So. Yeah, no, I think we all, I mean, this is not a surprise at this point. Um, I, what I mean? Do you think this was too late? What was how? How do you think about? What do you think about this timing? I mean, we kind of guessed it had to happen after Ole Miss, right. and then it didn't immediately. But we, but the 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 grapevine kind of suggested it was coming. It's really weird timing. I, I, I last week and I remember hearing about a, a staff meeting and a team meeting being called uh, on Sunday, and that. Uh, you know, led me to wonder if uh, <laughs> if it was going to be that day, and then you know, obviously that didn't happen. But it, it's it is an interesting time in the season for it to happen. You know, week four, I think the only the the, the last tech coach to get fired mid season got fired like with two weeks left or something, and so you know we're 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 going similarly to Nebraska. You know, we're hoping to give him another year and. Uh, saw issues early and then, you know, pulled the trigger and yeah. no, no more Collins and, you know, with that, no more Stansbury. No more Stansbury, which I think if, if people have told me like, they really like Stansbury both inside and outside the Athletic Association. I mean, let me just look at the success of everything else, right. minus football and men's basketball as of recent, if you only look at 2021 and beyond. Um, but, yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of the reason, you know, I mean, Stansbury, Stansbury's ended up dooming himself pretty much with, with the Collins situation. And uh, to be fair, our finances are not in the best shape. No. Uh, GD no. Athletics, which, you know, I, I'd imagine to a large extent that falls on him. So that, that's not going to help. But, yeah, I mean, the, the state of Georgia Tech Athletics is pretty good. It's just the state of our, uh, you know, top two money makers in football and men's basketball. Uh, not a lot of wins besides basketball's miracle run. No, yeah. COVID year. And someone would probably say there's an asterisk there because we didn't have to play every round in that tournament either because we got – we 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 kind of, we ACC jumped our way. There's a banner in the rafters. It counts. Correct. Um, do you think it, it, was there a moment where you would have thought, okay, now's the time we got to pull the trigger here? Like, be, 
what was there it, it, i guess we'll put it one way like was there do you remember a distinct moment watching a game or following everything where you're like okay now's the time like I'm, I'm okay with pulling the trigger here well i mean last year it was sort of a series of games you know we, we were in the we were in it at three and three after the duke win you know with a with a win over a solid unc team right we're competitive against clemson we're competitive in each of our first six games besides the pit one that was rough and, yep. you know the niu game we should have won but still you know we played six we played five competitive games out yep. of six which is not exactly a hallmark of this tenure um and looked pretty good and then the next six i mean you know we had a couple of close ones but then the last two losing by a combined hundred nothing it wouldn't have shocked me if he got let go then this year i mean there was it was sort of like like watching a train wreck I mean, just, you know, Clemson, we looked good for a while, and then just the, the wheels fell off in the fourth quarter. Against Western Carolina, we were uninspiring, quite frankly. I mean, yeah. you know, they were beating us 14-7 early in the game, and yeah, we ended up winning, but only winning. But we, we didn't cover the spread. You know, only won by 18 after forcing four turnovers. Like, the offense was kind of anemic, and then, you know, the Ole Miss game was just a complete mess. And UCF, yeah. uh, UCF the big thing was that, you know, with Collins pledging to specifically focus on special teams, penalties, just general discipline issues, and then for us to have just those issues, just rife with those issues yeah. in the UCF game, I mean, it, it showed, you know, at best we're taking a step sideways every year, and this yeah. year maybe a step back. The There was multiple, I mean, UCF's drive was a Paul Johnson-esque drive of like, let's get it to fourth and two, convert every time, right. bank on the other team making the mistakes, and didn't score somehow. I mean, they should have scored a touchdown probably a that drive. That drive with college clock rules where it stops every time. They it's get insane. A first down. It's that's, insane. Uh, that's, yeah. That's a little egregious. And, you know, at least they forced a field goal there at the yeah. end. But uh, that was bad. I mean, it, it was penalties because there were, I believe, multiple offsides that yeah, got there the were, first down there, there. We had pass interference penalties later in the game um, and a blocked punt. That This one just got returned straight for a touch in. All yeah. four of our blocked punts resulted in touchdowns for the other team, but this one was the most direct. Yeah. I think this is kind of sneaking into my mailbag answer to this question, but when I was at Notre, the Notre Dame game last year, we got we got down to the 11. Like, we finally put a drive together in the second quarter. I'm like, okay, but none of me really believed we were going to score. And my friend else was like, hey, you're here now. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cute. And then the next play, 70-yard fumble return for Notre Dame. Yeah, and, and, and it was like, I, I could have guessed. Like, I wasn't, like, outright saying we're not going to score here. But internally, I just – the feeling was there where I knew this was not going to work out. It's it's not Collins' football for this particular situation against a good team to work out. Right, and that was another problem, too. We, we had we had red zone struggles the whole time, too. You know, inconsistent kicking game, which – Oh, my goodness. You know, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe, isn't, maybe isn't entirely fault, you know, his fault. No. But an inconsistent kicking game meant that – you know, we weren't guaranteed field goals, so we got into the red zone a lot. And, well, we didn't get the red zone that often. But when we got into the red zone, we weren't really expected to score a touchdown. So, the and then against against Ole Miss, we uh, we got deep into the red zone. We were, you know, basically on the goal line one time, and, you know, that ended with a sack on fourth down. And then against UCF, we had a, a drive where we were looking to take the lead. Um went ahead and, you know, got the ball to, like, the five-yard line, and yep. all of a sudden the only reason they weren't up by more than they were is because, uh, honestly, a really good play by, uh, I believe it was Nate McCollum punching the ball out on the goal line. But, yeah. you know, it should have been – the ball should have been on our goal line, not theirs. Yes, yes, so. yeah. I'm going to recap a little bit of Collins' tenure here. Stop me at any point you want to talk about anything. Hired after going 7-6 and six and then 8-4 and four at Temple. Uh, I mean, he's from around here. He called this his dream job in his uh, press, oh, introductory press conference. I went to that press conference and was ready to run through a brick wall for that man by the end because his charisma was so high, and Stansbury looks so pleased at what he at himself in that moment. Right. Well, and at that point too, I mean, part of the stuff we brought him in for was, uh, you know, he wanted to, to rebuild a brand, rebuild a culture, which is something that. You know, under uh, the offense wasn't the only thing archaic about Paul Johnson. No. Um, you know, he wasn't big on branding or culture, and Collins was supposed to change that. Whether he did or not is uh, it's a question up to the, up to the listener. It's a um, it's a question. But, we have we have different paint on the field now. Right. Our, we do. our uniforms look different. Are different and all that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't really know that he did that much. And then he was supposed to modernize the offense, and the offense is more modern now. But uh, you know. Compared to a compared to a team that you know won an Orange Bowl in, in recent memory against <laughs> Jack Prescott, <laughs> right? Uh, you know that was that was that triple option offense worked shockingly well. Um, yeah. So he was supposed to make a lot of changes. I don't know that he did that. Go ahead though. In the spring game, his first spring game, we lined up in the triple option and then audibled into a shotgun with a beautiful pass up the middle. I was that was probably my favorite moment 
is the first play ever run in a practice game. Yeah. And uh, in a lot of ways, it was downhill from there. Well, we did beat Miami in a game we shouldn't have beat them in. That was fun. Uh, that was a the, really the fun Presley game. The Presley-Harbin touchdown. The, yes, yes, the, the best of Presley. Never forget that. Not at all. 2020, COVID year, of course, but we were still 3-7. and seven. Uh, We finished 3-9 and nine in 2019. 3-7 well, um, was an improvement, too. It, you know, yeah, we win, just lost fewer games. The win percentage was up, yes. And our, um, that was our, our uh, single-season ACC win record under his tenure. So. Yes, all with, three. With three. All, three. all three of those games. So technically a 300 winning percentage, which was his best at any point. Um, we That was the same year we lost 73-7 to seven at Clemson when they used four quarterbacks, only three of which were listed as quarterbacks on the depth chart. Uh, 2021 was, I mean, arguably the first year we thought, okay, he should get off the table because he's now got some of his guys and he's not stuck with Paul's roster and having to adjust. Like we were having to like figure right. out what Tobias Oliver was going to be the whole, those first couple of years. Like he's the backup quarterback, but he kind of is a runner. And then he turned out to be a D, was he a DB or a cornerback? He, he was starting cornerback. Yeah. For, well, and that was an interesting experiment. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the first year, you know, it's, it's. You know, you're transferring from triple option to a pro style, which is about as big of a jump besides like triple option to air raid right, yeah. that you could make. And so you didn't have his guys yet. Well, we had a pretty significant regression, though. I mean, you know, you forget we made a bowl game in Johnson's last year. We did, we did, and right. We made a quick lane bowl. We got waxed by Minnesota. Yeah. But, you know, we well, we made a bowl game and then big regression to three and nine. That happens under a scheme change. You didn't have his guys yet. COVID year, weird year. Yeah. You know, maybe you can let that one go. But yeah, I mean, 2021, I think uh, everybody. Uh, was expecting and hoping for uh, a, a jump that just didn't happen. S- something, yeah. I mean, yeah. and you mentioned we were three and three, and then lost lost some nail biters. Pitt just fleeced us uh, yeah. in a game, and they and they weren't they weren't up to the full Kenny Pickett hype yet at that point no. either. Like it was well, still that might have been the game that moved I, him up. That yeah, they once they showed how good they could get. And Sims looked promising at times. Obviously, the North Carolina game was incredible. He had his right. his long run. He was showing his gunslinger arm. The decisions were still not all there yet. Well, um, Sims looked good on Saturday. I did know he, he no he's he, for he might be our best player. I mean he honestly, looked, he's he probably looked, our best he player. He did look yeah. really good, and you know he was a, he was a high level four star recruit for a reason. But yeah. I mean yeah, twenty twenty one was weird too because we were favored by three scores over NIU, and then you know that ended up being a really weird game. Sims yep. goes down with injury, and just you know one thing led to another game winning two point conversion. Yeah. Yeah, and then somehow I still had hope after week six, and then that hope was dashed to the tune of six straight losses. Yeah, and then by the end. Notre Dame and Georgia, as you mentioned, we lost 100 to nothing combined in those games. Um, I remember talking with uh, Georgia's, uh, the bread and black speed guy, we talked before that game. I was like, if we get 10, we'll be lucky at, at all. Like, it's going to take some massive Georgia mistakes to get put up literally any points, and we did not score at all. Um, Notre Dame was on track to beat us 90 to nothing at halftime in that game, and then it eased off and only scored 10 the rest of the game. But that's very nice of them. That, they, that. they didn't need to do much to keep us down. Um, and then this year, the schedule was loaded from the beginning. It was, I mean, everyone. This was the this, the talking point. Was that like, why is Ole, why are Ole Miss in Clint, why is Ole Miss on your schedule in a year and and UCF in a year where you're trying to save your job? Um, right. I mean, we, we, granted, these games are agreed to ahead of time. I think right. this UCF game was a re, is a makeup from when Irma swept through mm-hmm. and canceled that game, so we didn't play it. Um, and so that was a re, that, that got us back in there. But still, I mean, Clemson, Ole Miss, UCF in your first four games, it was right. a team that hasn't put up any points in multiple games worth of time. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, I mean, yeah, that's the thing, too. And that's, uh, you're right, it's not entirely Collins' fault. I mean, these, a lot of these games get scheduled way, well in advance. We, we have a home and home with Bama in a decade. So, you know, yeah. look forward to that one. <laughs> uh, if Saban's still around, it'll be an interesting one. Or it won't be an interesting one. But, uh, no, no. Um, the, yeah, because last year I believe we had what was rated the third hardest schedule in football, and this year coming into the year, I think it was like fourteen I, or fifteen. Oh, four. Four. It was I've, four. I've, I've heard nothing outside the top five for our strength uh, of yeah, schedule, yeah, yeah. Or for our you know strength of schedule this year. The you know the, the teams we have to play. I mean, UCF is a, is a strong, uh, strong you know AAC team. Uh, you know, having to play Clemson week one. You know, having to play a, a Georgia team that frankly might even be better this year. Yeah. Um, yeah we're gonna have at least game. we're gonna have between Georgia, Ole Miss. Hit Clemson. That's four ranked games at least, right there. Right, um, which and, you know Miami was ranked coming into the season. They've fallen off. A they they bit, might not be a ranked game by this point. You know, there's, there's there's time for a couple of other ACC teams to jump into it if it shakes out that way later in the year. So it took three years for Collins to get the ten wins. That was the Western Carolina game. Presley Harvin the third was his only consensus All American in his time here. If Jameer Gibbs gets one, you could maybe I you, I wouldn't credit that one, but it was no. at least a guy he coached that clearly was and worth recruited. the shot. Yes. And um, 
We're also two and one against FCS teams. So two and one. That's fantastic. Yes. Uh, yeah. Don't forget the infamous loss to the triple option team uh, in the Citadel. Um, let's talk about the marketing for a second. Four hundred four. The culture mayhem at the bends. Endlessly drinking out of Waffle House cups. Right. So he. I mean, he did his best to connect himself to Atlanta, which is, frankly, I mean, it's it's a good it's a good idea, um, and and I think the effort was there. It's just, I mean, this state. By and large, there's a lot of teams in the state, and there's one really good team in the state that a lot of uh, a lot of unaffiliated folks cheer for. And I mean, you know, for for the culture, uh, I, I like the idea. I don't really know what that means, to be completely honest. Um, and yeah. you know, the, the the Waffle House Cup's good. Mayhem at Mercedes Benz is fun too, just because it's the bigger stadium. You know, we had the big win there. I mean, that, that's the marquee win of his career. Yeah, it is. Is, it is, is the UNC game, and so that was fun. That was big. But, you know, ultimately, uh, Mayhem Mercedes-Benz this year just meant uh, a, a fourth quarter collapse. Yep. Um, and, you know, the, connecting us to Atlanta is good. And, frankly, his recruiting was fairly sound, especially in the transfer. Uh, the At the transfer. beginning, yeah. I think it was 55th ranked this year. Right. So, the well, I think we now have three straight t- uh, top 22 transfer recruiting classes by gotcha. 24-7. So it's, I mean, again, really, at, at least for the, the, the last three years, I don't know about 2023, um, but, you know, three strong recruiting classes in a row um, that, you know, didn't translate to wins in the field. No. But uh, and that was the interesting thing. You know, we're in a recruiting hotbed, and he's trying to tie us to Atlanta. Um but we did better recruiting from just other schools. Yeah, Giz was the only top twenty-five Atlanta-based recruit that we got. Uh, he's, the whole, even, he's even Dalton. The so. whole yeah, it, yeah, the whole time. Um, and we, we had co- very likable coaches that a lot of our guys seemed to like, but it never gelled. And I mean, unfortunately, that means you got to go look at the top and what's happening there to mm-hmm. understand why it's not happening. Um, Brent Key is looking to be is supposedly going to be the interim head coach for the time being. Um, lots of names out there in terms of who might be next. Um, how soon this will happen, we don't know, considering that Todd Stansbury is supposedly getting fired as well. I'm, our guess is that you're, you're going to want to get the AD solved before the coach, because uh, right. that's a much more important so, hire. So Stansbury has been officially fired at this point. Frank Neville is the interim athletic yes. director. Yes, um, So, and then, yeah, Brent Key is the lead name I'm hearing right now. It's, I think it's between him and Chip Long for the, the interim head coach, but I believe Brent Key, Key, Key is what expected I've, to be. Key is what I've heard. Right. But, um, um, and, but, yeah, I mean, you know, athletic director, I'm not entirely sure kind of where what sort of market – we have there, um, you know, it, it could be, it could be a promote from within situation. Uh, we may go the route of another athletic director yeah. that's been fired recently, but the coaching one's going to be interesting because there's there's a pretty hefty coaching carousel this year just from guys who've already been let go. Not that I particularly want like Herm Edwards, but you know, Frost yeah, is no. a name to keep an eye on. Uh, from Nebraska and Dan Mullen's of, Dan Mullen's currently not coaching a football team Dan right Mullen now. Dan Mullen and um, Tom Herman yeah. are both, uh, neither of them are coaching a football team. And there's a lot of, you know, the route we went with Collins wasn't obviously it didn't really work out. But, no. uh, you know, Temple, he had two solid years at Temple. But, you know, you got to look at a guy um, like Jamie Chadwell at Carolina, or Coastal Carolina, who's yep. turned them into a very very strong team you can you can look at app state's current guy he's only i can't remember the name his name off the top of my head he's only had a couple of years now that uh since drinkwitz went to mizzou but, lost to james madison on saturday well james madison <laughs> happens to be a very strong team. They, are, they, they are, are they are in fact three and out they are um but you know i, I think the, it's worth looking at some group of five guys or uh um, i'm big on byu's head coach whose name is also escaping me right now um and uh, and then, you know, potentially the, the, the classic route of finding an SEC coordinator. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's been plenty uh, that I've seen on the message boards that people are pining for. We'll deep dive much more when me, Jake, and Akshay tackle uh, a longer form version of this tonight. We just want to make sure we get something out there quick for everybody. Uh, right. And, well, but before we move on from the coaching, I yes. just want to say we are now in the Dion sweepstakes. I don't think we're anywhere near the top. But no. Our, no, our name has been officially entered into the into the lottery. People are going to can we pull Deion Sanders? People are going to want that. We warned against this in our last episode. That is a highly highly unlikely situation. As much as it would be very, it would be fun to have Dion coaching a game in Mercedes Benz, home of the Falcons, where he made himself known. But I, odds are that's not happening either. I'll just remind everyone he got destroyed in the Celebration Bowl last year in Mercedes Benz. Uh, so. I think that's all we're going to do for now. Uh, me, Jake, and actually will be back later 
today and we'll post something on Tuesday morning uh, with the rest of it that will be the official signs episode 135 this is just an extra Will thanks for helping us out to get something done quickly um, I guess to just feel what the vibe is right now we're only going to get this feeling with this particular situation once probably so yeah it's it's an interesting time big, big turning point for the program lots of stuff coming up we'll see whatever news comes out in the next week or so it'll obviously be on from the rumble com. Uh, you can find us there at FTRS blog on Twitter. My handle is at Jack Nicholas. Will, are you on Twitter? I am, but I don't use it. He doesn't use it. You can just follow uh, at, uh, at the Neek or Neek Sports, which I think I still need to give you the login to anyways from last year. So there you go. All right. Thanks for listening, y'all. Go Jackets.